Okay, folks, um, this is kind of a world first for me anyway. Um, literally, this is a first test run of our inverter system um, based upon the kit by Johannes Hovner. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing the name properly. Uh, we have that connected up to our Siemens uh, 1PV5135 motor and it's currently set in volts hertz mode at 10 hertz and uh, we're just turning over there at a nice lazy uh, speed. Um, a lot of parameters that I have to program uh, but this is just a very basic uh, test run. So let's have a quick look around at what we're actually doing here. Um, obviously on the motor I've got my three phase uh, connections going into the terminal box. I don't have the encoder uh, set up at the minute which I will need to do uh, for doing slip control. Uh, got our inverter hardware just very uh, basically rigged up. I just rigged up some terminal block here um, on the various I.O. lines so I can just have uh, some easy connections there. Obviously we'll be looking at an amp seal connector and various mods uh, to this part. Um, we have a USB line uh, going in here. That goes over uh, to my laptop uh, where we have a terminal um, emulator program running um, basically that lets us uh, change the parameters of the inverter uh, it's a very kind of a war games type interface uh, so I quite like that and we're deriving power uh, from the 3 series uh, we've just basically done a bit of a jump lead job uh, just in there with some 6 square cable crocodile clips we got a 30 amp uh, DC fuse um, set up in there and that's running our DC bus on the inverter at about 170 volts maybe 172 volts at the minute uh, which the seaman seems to be happy with even though it's considerably uh, less than what would be normally required but yeah just a very first little test run I have to say I'm delighted uh, just to see that um, just to see that shaft turning there is uh, certainly a um, a first for me so uh, I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, basically get the rest of the get of the um, things done I'm gonna play with some frequencies gonna get it spinning faster and slower and reverse direction and all that kind of thing then I have to get the encoder uh, rigged up to some 5 volt power get an encoder signal in connect up my uh, BMW Hall Effect throttle pedal and we should be able to uh, give it some throttle so stay with us folks uh, more fun stuff to come in the in the AC department thanks for watching Alrighty folks, so we're back with our Siemens motor. Um, for those of you that missed the earlier video, uh, we got the inverter built and we're currently uh, running our 1PV5135 in volts hertz mode. Now, I've been having a bit of a play uh, with some of the various parameters here on the computer and uh, I've got some success um, with the motor spinning but I seem to be running into some difficulties uh, so what's going on at the minute is that we're running uh, about a 170 volts DC bus and I just turned the camera around here and we're getting that from our trusty headway uh, pack in the 3 series uh, courtesy of some 6 square cable 
Uh, we're monitoring the DC uh, current coming in with my fluke meter there, which is currently telling me right about 0 0.4 amps going in. Now, I have my field weakening parameter set to 100. And we're running, uh, I, th I think where I'm coming into difficulties is that I don't know how many pole pairs that the 1PV5135 has. So that's something I need to find out. So if anyone happens to know the number of pole pairs in a Siemens 1PV5135, please leave me a message. Now I've currently got it set to 4. And my minimum frequency is set to 1 hertz. Now I'm spinning there at what uh, actually looks like um, about 120 RPM or so. I do have an optical tack which I must dig out. I'm just not sure where the thing is. Now if I set, if I go on the computer over here and I set uh, pole pairs 2 and press enter. You should see our shaft slows down. Uh, to about a 1 hertz speed. We have the minimum frequency set to 1 hertz and the maximum frequency set to 200 hertz. Now I've got my trusty BMW Hall Effect uh, throttle pedal set up here. This pedal is out of an E46 3 series. It gives nominally about 0.65 volts at zero throttle and about 4.1 volts uh, at full throttle. I have a little scaling resistor in there on my board uh, just to bring that into it into below the 3.3 volt maximum of the um, Olimex STM board. Now, so theoretically when I push the pedal <coughs> the first 30% of the pedal is set for regen so when I exceed that we should in theory go up to 200 Hertz which you would think would be pretty fast but that's not actually what occurs unfortunately so I'm just going to try and just show you guys what happens here now we do start to pick up speed but the motor is growling there now we're doing some serious growling Kind of a growl region. Now, if I set my field weakening, um, it's currently sorry, my field weakening is currently set at seventy-five. So, if I do set F weak, set F weak, it maybe. 150 and get rid of the growling. So that's set at 150 and we don't do as much growling. And something strange happens then if I push the pedal all the way down. just seems to lock up and slow down again so something strange going on here as they say but the main thing is the damn motor is turning so I think uh, by the way as well the DC current we're going flat out there is about uh, it's about 1.9 amps or so yeah, 1.9 amps there. So we've got a long way to go with this, but it's a damn good start. Uh, I've got a multimeter there measuring the AC phase current. So one thing I haven't done, which would be kind of smart thing to do, which I'm not, would be to measure all three of the phase currents there and see if they're the same. So there's about 2. Point, about 2.5 amps on that phase. 2.5 amps on that phase 
and again about 2.5 amps there so we seem to be it's not like the motor is uh, single phasing or something like that indeed it might run single phase but it w wouldn't start uh, without all three phases being operational um, so um, the inverter itself uh, is pretty much as we have seen I've simply um, built it up on one of the DMOC heat sinks as we went through previously and I've just very roughly wired up the uh, logic side of things here just with some terminal block and uh, cable ties there just so I can actually easily get at the um, I.O. lines because we've got some uh, 12 volt signals uh, that need to go in there um, for uh, direction input and uh, temperature sensor cutouts and stuff like that so we just need to run 12 volts to all of those for testing uh, I've got my BMW pedal going there with a 5 volt ground and signal so we've also got the little USB uh, converter which converts the serial uh, port into USB and we have that going over to a laptop uh, that's running GK term, uh, term I should say uh, just to give us a terminal emulator program uh, so we can actually talk to the inverter and that works very well uh, I'm just running it on the laptop there and it's uh, quite a nice interface on it it's, it's uh, works very well there's no need for anything more complicated than that um, but yeah I'm just uh, needing to work out I think some of the parameters of the 1PV5135 I think once I have that in place it should pretty much run up now I know that my bus voltage is a little bit low um, I'm, I'm only at about 170 volts uh, I should be at 300, and, you know, 300 plus, but I don't think that that should cause me uh, too many problems. But I think where it could be causing me a problem is uh, with some of the parameters, because the parameters are probably set to expect a higher voltage uh, DC bus, probably 250 to 400 vo volts. Um, so unfortunately we don't have that available to us at the minute um, that is something I might be able to uh, work around um, so yeah this has uh, been a pretty good day uh, we've got a AC motor turning for the first time um, it's uh, I won't say that it's it's complicated but it's kinda of complicated in a way that I can actually get my head around um, unlike as I said looking into the DMOC uh, that really just didn't uh, didn't uh, do it for me at all so yeah we're looking good and um, we'll be back soon uh, once I kind of figure out some of these parameters um, but very happy overall uh, with what's happened here now today um, overall plan for the inverter I think will be I'm going to design my own version of the um, control board definitely uh, I want to go in there with an amp seal connector mounted on board uh, to do away with some of the ribbon cable stuff um, and uh, yeah so there's lo lots to do uh, but it's a great project um, and uh, absolutely thumbs up to Johannes Hovner and uh, again I hope I'm pronouncing that name properly I'm probably ins insulting the guy terribly and I apologize for that if I am um, but yeah we're going to be doing a few mods probably looking at uh, different current sensors as well um, unfortunately I detest that particular current sensor uh, that he's used here because they're just such a narrow opening in them so just looking through some of the documentation and looking at some of the 
circuitry and that, and we should be able to uh, we should be able to substitute in some of the LEM HDFS uh, series sensors of the same type that we employed on the DC controller, uh, which have a big I think it's a thirty or thirty two millimeter um, uh, hole size in the middle, so we can easily just put seventy square cables straight through that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, quite interesting to see that motor spinning. So uh, next thing to do in the immediate future um, is I have to work out the connections for the encoder. Basically uh, on this motor uh, there is an encoder on the back. I'm trying to squeeze around the milling machine here without electrocuting myself. Basically what we have uh, on the terminal box is we have our three, our three phase terminals but we have this little guy here which is one of these uh, military type um, connectors uh, I think I might have to order one of those from Jack uh, so that I can connect um, at least one of the uh, encoders in here uh, so that we can get a position signal back to the controller um, <clears throat> we're going to need that to run closed loop uh, control mode uh, which will be impo important at the minute we're just running volts hertz which is basically uh, which is uh, basically open loop control uh, so we need to get away from, uh, from that um, but just there running at one hertz there's absolutely no vibrations or anything out of the motor so um, I think we just need to work out the parameters and so on um, get that so there's a temperature sensor in this motor as well not sure if it'll be compatible uh, with what the software is currently set up with uh, I know it's a KTY 83 sensor has been specified for the motor temperature sensing so we may have to just kind of uh, bolt one of those into the you know, to one of the spare positions here on the casing. Um, and that's about all she wrote for the minute, folks. Uh, it's a very interesting arena, I think, to be in. Um, be trying this stuff out. Um, I think if we can work out a system here for these motors, uh, that's low cost, is simple to build and simple to use. Um, I think we should be on to something. So, yeah, lots to do. Going to get back onto the uh, position sensor hopefully soon, and um, we'll be back and uh, hopefully get it spinning up to uh, proper speed. So, right, that's enough of me blabbering on. Um, back soon. Thanks for wa watching, and uh, talk to you all soon.